is calling 2022 CR6879W, State of Texas versus Armisa Brent. We're going to have parties announced for the record for the state. Ms. Marks. For the defense. George Sharman. Okay. Uh, defense, how long have you represented uh, Ms. Brent? Several months, Judge. Okay. Uh, state, are you proceeding on the information as presented? Yes, Judge. All right, defense, I'm showing you what's entitled uh, Acknowledgement of Discovery. Have you received all the discovery in this case and it's your review with your client? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. All right, the court is also going to call 2021 CR 10420, State of Texas versus uh, Amisa Brent. Brent, can I have the parties announced for the record for the state? Great, sir. For the defense? George Sharma. And are you Miss Brent? Yes, ma'am. All right, in cost number 2022 CR 6849W, you're charged by information with the offense of uh, endangerment of a child. Uh, the range of punishment for that is anywhere from two to 10, I'm sorry, two, anywhere from 180 days up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes. And in cause number 2021 CR 10420, the state is proceeding on the less included offense of driving while intoxicated as a class B misdemeanor. The range of punishment for that offense is up to 180 days in the Bear County Jail and up to a $2,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, I do. Counselor, each of these cause numbers, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? She has, Judge. And each of the cause numbers, do you believe your client has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against her? Confidence that she does. And each of the cause numbers, do you believe your client is currently competent and was legally saying at the time of the offense? Yes. Uh, the state has recommended a $1,000 fine to be probated. They recommend deferred adjudication in this regard with 2021 CR 10420. Did you understand that to be the plea bargain agreement in each of the cause numbers? Yes, sir. The defense is at the plea bargain agreement in each of the cause numbers. It is, Your Honor. State is at the plea bargain agreement in each of the cause yes. numbers. All right, off the record for a moment. Defense, you didn't sign the documents uh, and neither did your client. The state is recommending that your community supervision be for a term of two years. There be a TAP evaluation, 120 hours of community service restitution, DWI education, VIP, admission interlock for the full term. And in cause number 2022 CR 6849W, the state is recommending that your deferred adjudication be for a term of two years. There will be a TAP evaluation, 120 hours community service restitution. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Yes, sir. Then in cause number 2021 CR 10420, the less included offense of DWI is a class B misdemeanor. How do you plead guilty? Not guilty and no contest. Yes, sir. In cause number 2022 CR 6879W, how do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Guilty. State, any evidence to support the defendant's guilty plea? Yes, Judge. State office states exhibit one and all attachments in both cause numbers. No objection. And each of the cause numbers, the court will find that the defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. And each of the cause numbers, the court will accept it to evidence states exhibits one and attachments, and the court will review the same. All right. In each of the cause numbers, after reviewing states' exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty. All right. Are you both ready to proceed with sentencing? We are, Judge. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Judge, there are a few things, but um, my client is in the military. Um, this was a very difficult choice for her to make. Um, I know you saw that there was an accident in this case. I wanted you to understand that the lady that she hit in the accident, it was nighttime, she had her lights off and she was stopped in the middle of the freeway. Um, so because of that, uh, we've had to face the music here. This is gonna affect her military career, but she's very sincere and accepting responsibility. Hopes that you will follow this plea bargain agreement and run these concurrently so that um, for whatever is remainder of remaining of her career that she can carry it out. All right. So I understand that, uh, you know, a person may be stopped in the middle of the highway or the middle of the road. This is San Antonio. As I told people before, pedestrians will run across the freeway, walk on the freeway. I don't know why. I've only seen that in, uh, happen in San Antonio, but for some reason, people will do that. But that doesn't take away from the fact that, you know, that you were driving intoxicated with a three-year-old in a car and that an accident occurred and that the three-year-old could have been killed. 
what I've learned from um, being a judge and a defense attorney and also a prosecutor is that usually when people drive intoxicated, and I always tell people my statistics professor would not approve of this study that I've done because I haven't done a real study, but it's just what I've seen is that the persons who usually walk away from accidents are the person who's intoxicated. The person who usually gets killed is the passenger or it, it's either the person that they hit. So this could have turned out worse than what it is. The three-year-old could be dead because somebody decided to take a drink and drive. Me personally, I don't drink alcohol. I think it's nasty. It doesn't taste good to me. But if people are going to drink, they need to do it responsibly. And most definitely, if you're driving with a child, and I'm assuming that's your child, yes, driving with a child in a vehicle, having had alcohol is a big no-no. And I know people think, oh, three-year-old won't remember. They usually end up doing, they usually end up remembering. They may not remember who, what, when, but they do remember uh, that they were in an accident. You understand? Okay. So what have you been doing to rectify this situation as far as your drinking issues? I've been in behavioral health, been diagnosed, been taking therapy outside of the military as well with better health. And I minimize only wine and all my versus going in. So what are you planning on doing with your career? I know people think this means that your military career is over, but not necessarily. Um, in terms of my military career, I'll have to face I'll have to face uh, whatever comes, but uh, I have a good support system from my family and my uh, fiance who will work some things out for the future so I can still get the same life. So, does she have any criminal history? Uh, no, <clears throat> but I do have one comment to make, if I may, Judge. We all can make comments. We're here. Okay. Um, I'm trying to do what if I she's feel able best. to keep her position in the military. Uh, she is required on duty to carry a sidearm. And uh, I know that you're going to admonish her about firearms as a result of this. You know, it's a deferred adjudication during her probation. I'm not admonishing her about firearms of a deferred adjudication. I don't see why she wouldn't be allowed to have a firearm if she's on base, if, but outside of base, absolutely not. I don't know if the state, you're not going to have any objections to that, are you? No, Judge. So that's not an issue. Okay, thank you, Judge. All right. So um, with regards to the DWI, and this is just me putting that out there, she doesn't have any criminal history, it appears. At least that's what I'm being told. Um, how do I say this? Is there a reason? I, I don't understand the deferred adjudication for the felony and the conviction for the misdemeanor. And does the conviction for the misdemeanor negatively attacked her military service as opposed to the um, felony case. And mind you, I take DWIs very seriously, but as a person who's looking at cases objectively, these are my thoughts. So I'm wondering what is the purpose or reason to give her a conviction on the misdemeanor case. These are just questions that I have. Because honestly, um, there are some people that should have a conviction on their record. There are some people who maybe should not have a conviction on a record, but I'm being told she's military. I'm assuming, uh, and if I'm wrong, someone please correct me. I'm assuming this is her first 
uh, contact with the law in a negative way. Am I wrong in that? So I'm trying to figure out why is there a conviction on the misdemeanor? And I understand that the state, I understand your negotiations that um, the felony has been reduced to a misdemeanor. I just, uh, looking at it global, globally, is this a person that should have a conviction? And Judge, do you want me to explain our rationale for the DWI conviction or? Uh, uh, just a moment. Yes. Um, so our rationale was just based off of the facts of the case. Um, in the body cam video, uh, Ms. Brent admits to it, drove from Houston to San Antonio before being in the accident. Yes. And there is a bottle of vodka found in her purse. Um, so because of that, that was our rationale of doing the DWI conviction to hopefully prevent this from happening again. But we'll respect the court's decision if, if you'd like to defer or something. I think the court so decides. All right. So, and I understand the state's rationale. And again, um, I know there are some cases that there should be convictions, but I mean, right now I have before me a person who doesn't have any other contact with law other than this. And I'm well aware that usually, I don't know if it's your situation, usually when people um, have a DWI, this is usually like the first time they got caught, but they're, they're still drinking. So I'm just trying to um, determine whether or not um, Yes, yes, yes. Can I say something? Yes. Um, I guess from the state's perspective, um, we based our recommendation on what Brittany just said. Um, we understand the court's concern and the court's point of view. If we would not object to her applying for um, deferred on the DWI, the only thing we would ask the community for uh, PSI or CAP just so that we can all be sure that there are no other concerns. All right. And, and uh, the state is well aware. I, I usually never do this, That's good. but uh, to me, this is um, a um, unique situation and a unique case. So, uh, Ms. Brent, I can sentence you today. And if I sentence you today, there's going to be a conviction on the DWI. Um, but if you would like, uh, I can consider uh, deferred adjudication but there would be a PSI that would be completed and we would come back on another date for me to make the decision of whether or not to do that. So what do you wish to do? I'd like to do a precise investigation. Oh, so here's the thing about that. Uh, Ms. Grant, worst case scenario is that you have a conviction for the DWI after I review the report, but I want um, some more information because I know that the state wasn't expecting me to do this. And I do understand the, the state's rationale um, for wanting you to have a conviction. Um, I'm sort of looking at it globally, which I know they looked at it globally because they're giving me the facts of your case. But um, I know that you've served in the military and that you have not had any other contact um, with law enforcement negatively other than this. And also, if there is some negative contact with law enforcement that I don't know about, the PSI report is gonna tell us that as well. Okay? All right, so in each of the, um, Ms. Ferguson, could you give me a PSI date for each of these cases, please? All right, so we're going to come back on September 6th, and I'm going to want a TAP evaluation. And she said that she's receiving behavioral. Can we do a, a MIC evaluation just in case? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, I have TAP and MIC. Uh, yes. And so, uh, Ms. Brent, be sure to give probation uh, the information about. Um, whatever services you're uh, availing yourself of that are with the military. 
All right, and they're going to give you a reset form. We'll be back on September uh, 6th, and at that time, I'll make a decision on your case. All right, is there anything else? That's all good. Thank all right. you. You're welcome. Let's get the facts straight. She loves a verbal ashtray. Never blowing smoke when she gets pissed. She's quick to castrate. Love her on a good day. Love her on a bad day. Either way, she's here to stay, stay, stay. Polio.